Real Boy Radio, Fort Myers, Florida, baby, we back again. Got the Grindhouse boys in the building, but most importantly, I got a very special guest with me today, my boy, Solmar. What's going on, big dog? Yo, what's up, man? It's nice to finally be here. Yeah, I'm happy yeah. you're here, man. I'm hyped. Yeah, I'm been, I've been so excited. I've been telling people about this whole thing like for like two weeks now fire dude that's what's up man yeah so tell me a little bit about your background bro like where you grew up how'd you get into music like give me a little uh, rundown i grew up in like pompano florida uh shout out I, pompano man shout out yak <laughs> uh i kind of like uh growing up when i was in high school i always kind of had like an interest in like creativity and i'm doing a lot of bunch of like i used to draw i used to like be in band mm -hmm. i used to like Anything that was in a creative space, I really like. Mm -hmm. uh, I've touched into like live streaming before, mm -hmm. doing video edits and stuff like that. But like for like years, I didn't really take music too serious because it was like I was in band. I really like playing it and all that. But um, mm -hmm. I'll say about like three, four years ago, I just kind of like downloaded FL on the phone and just decided to make beats on the on the phone. Yeah, you know. And I was just kind of like seeing how it is, and like as I kept doing them. I kind of really like the process. It was really fun. I was making a lot of dope vibes. And uh, before I even like got onto a, a computer, like I actually met KG um, and he like really liked one of the beats off the phone so much that he actually went to a studio, recorded a song and like took me with him. Nice. Yo. That's what's up. Yeah. And that's so, so you started using Fruity Loops? Yeah. Oh, shit. I feel like that's like the, the OG beat making software. I use, I used to use Fruity Loops a little bit, too. Like when I was like fucking around with beats yeah. a little bit. Like I feel like that's like the perfect beginner. You know yeah. what I mean? So do yeah. you still use that currently when you make beats? Yeah. So like, I, you know, I'm on the PC now. So like I have like a lot more control of what I can actually do. Right. So like uh, I kind of do everything on FL. I record, I'll mix, I'll make beats, whatever. Like, I'll do soundscape, of, like, effects and stuff like that. Like, anything, like, I could do on FL. I even make my beat videos, my visualizers on FL. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, so, like, I just kind of, like, learn how to, like, import, like, artwork and how to edit artwork. And, like, I just learned a lot, like, how to be able to get those programs to work with FL to make, like, whatever content that I need. So, like, I okay. can literally just cook up a beat, and when I like it, just go on whatever my um, my video, you know, so I can make artwork and shit, and, like, I just do edits and stuff, and then whenever I find something I like, I'll literally just go back on FL, transfer mm -hmm. everything, and I make the whole entire visualizer. So, when you make a beat, like, what's the, I guess, like, what's the starting point for, like, I'm sure it's probably different for, like, all producers and beat makers, but, like, what, like how do you, like, what's, what's the yeah. first part, first ingredient to when you make a beat? For, for me, personally, what I do is, like, I tend to kind of go through melodies or I listen to sounds. Most of the time, I go with melodies and I kind of, like, fill out what I'm trying to, like, do in that day, mm -hmm. you know? So, like, if I'm making, like, one beat in a day, like, because I'm kind of busy, I'm doing a bunch of other things, mm -hmm. I'll pull up a sample real quick. I'll pull up a couple, see what I like, and then just mm -hmm. kind of go off the vibe and just build on top of it. Mm -hmm. If it's one of those days where I have the time to actually, like, make beats, I'll, like, do, like, three, five a day. Like, I'll sit there. I'll play with samples here and there, but then there'll be other times where I experiment and I just start 
playing with the melodies and like actually like making my own stuff. Mm -hmm. So like uh, the song that we was playing in the intro was one of those where I made like the melody. Mm -hmm. You know, I added the instruments, I added the melody, and I took my time with that, like really trying to figure out what I was going for. I feel like that's like the most difficult part of making the beat. It's like making like an original melody. Yeah. Because like when I was fucking around on FL, like I can put the drums together and the hi hats, and I was like, I can make a half decent beat. But when it came to the melody, I was just like, what yeah, the, what the fuck? I, I, I struggle with the melody a lot. So I like. Um, I always treat it as a skill and any skill you can always learn, you know, sometimes it's more natural for other producers to make melodies. Like I know, I know some crazy, like, like I met this one dude, Aaron Barber, like Mm -hmm. crazy on the keys. He would literally, you could just talk to him and he has like a whole one minute and a half sympathy for you. Wow. Like, it's crazy. Just like that, huh? Yeah. But then you, but then when it comes to his beats, they weren't like the best. Because and we would see his process, like he had like video of himself doing like 10 minute drills. Mm-hmm. So he would cook up a little melody, fire, like, and this is in a Zoom call. And like you see like 10 people reacting to it and like people going crazy. Like what? this is the most crazy melody ever. But then when he came to doing the drums, he kind of like the entire energy just died It just out. wasn't his strength. Yeah. Like, you know, I feel like, you know, seeing stuff like that is like, I know different producers have different strengths. And when you play off your strength, you definitely can go further. I knew... For me personally, my strength would be, like, be able to put things together okay. and actually do, like, drums and, like, mix. Mm-hmm. That's my strength. So I tend to, like, play off that. Okay. If I'm cooking up live for an artist, I don't really try to, like, make my own melodies, mm-hmm. you know, because I know I can do something much better and much faster if I use a sample, you okay. know? Mm-hmm. And that's just because how I know, like, what I can work with, you know? Right. And sometimes, like... I'll go, like, I'll be in the studio with KG, for example, mm-hmm. and I, I'll pull up one melody, and I'm just like, I only like one part of it. So I literally get the stems, I'll break it down, get that one part that I like, and then look for another sample. We'll both go through, and we'll have, like, three samples brand- branded into one, and we'll, like, literally craft a whole song out of it. That's amazing. That's tight as fuck. So do, you, do you have, like, a particular artist or a typical, like, genre you like to sample? I'm, per- I'm pretty sure it's probably different for every producer. They have, like, their um, own thing, you know? Uh, I feel like... I kind of just go off really the vibe that I'm feeling in that moment. Okay. So, like, I don't have anything in particular besides, like, I'm most comfortable with hip-hop, you know, and trap. Like, Mm -hmm. that's my most comfortable spot. Like, that's where, like, I feel like I spend a lot of my time there. And because I spend a lot of my time in that genre, Mm -hmm. that's where I really excel. For sure. Because, you know, that's a natural thing. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, I've built that skill. Mm -hmm. But you put me, like, say, uh, like, again, like the song in the intro, that's obviously not a trap beat. Mm -hmm. That was more like an Afro pop dance hall kind of vibe. Right. And that's just something that, like, um, like I just, like, experimented, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, like, I've, I've, always been inspired and interested in those type of vibes and like the energy that it moves is just, it's different. It's like, you can't get that with a trap beat, you know, or a boom bat beat. You won't get that off lo-fi. Like they have their own energy and I really like am inspired by that energy a lot lately, you know? Yeah. I fucking yeah. Hell yeah. So when you're designing, when you're, when you're making a beat, like I know you work with a lot of artists, can you like look at an artist or hear maybe some of their previous work and be like, I know exactly what kind of beat I can cater around your sound. Um, that really depends on the artist, to mm-hmm. be honest. So it's like when, when I listen to an artist, sometimes they're still like, you can tell when an artist is still trying to find their sound. And when they do, when they're in that space, you hear them kind of jump. Can between. you tell that as a producer? Like, oh, this guy hasn't really fell into his pocket. Yet. I would say, I don't know if it's as a producer, but it's because I also engineer a lot. Like I almost do it on a daily basis where I'm doing a mix, mm-hmm. you know? So I feel like because I've been doing it like that and I'm producing, I'm recording, I'm mixing, I'm mastering, I'm producing and shit. Mm-hmm. So I feel like because of all of that combination, like there's sometimes you can just like listen and just be like, okay, I can hear that they're putting their all into it or they're completely confident in what they're making right now versus like some artists you hear and be like, okay, they have like, they could be dope, mm-hmm. but like they're lacking something. It could be that energy. It could be that confidence. I feel like you can hear the confidence in somebody yeah, when they're rapping. Like, and I feel like that's like the biggest thing like that really stands out. The artists that end up do making it is the ones that are really confident in their craft. That's a really good point. That's interesting. It's really interesting. So who are some of like your bigger producer influences? Like who are some of the guys you saw that were like, yo, I want to, I, I, I'm inspired well, by these guys. Probably like my biggest inspiration is Kanye West. 
Shout out to fucking Ye, bro. Yeah. I fucking like, love Kanye West. You know, like, and it just... Did I, you watch his documentary? I did. Did it inspire the shit out of you, right? I was actually like, I really, after watching that, I kind of was like, you know what? I'm going to start saying these things that I want to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually going to work towards them. Fuck yeah, Because dude. that's the one thing that I noticed he did in that documentary. You see him talk about years... Years, 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 way before he even got to the point that he is now. Mm-hmm. He would literally be like, oh, uh, rappers out here ain't really high fashionable, you know? Yeah. And the next thing you know, this man here has a brand that's just, like, crazy. Like, he's almost a billionaire because of it. Like He's that's, huge in the fashion world. You know, yeah. like, he's actually the biggest high fashion art, uh, artist rapper that he said he wanted to be because no one else was in that lane. He was the first, like, major mainstream rapper that was really on to, like, the fashion scene first. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. You know, and, like, it, and a lot of things that he spoke on, he tend to like speak on it and then actually get it done. Mm-hmm. And it might not happen next week or next year, but it sure enough happened. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's what's important is because, you know, at the end of the day, he had that vision and it might have took him a decade to get where he's at. He never lost that vision. He knew exactly what he wanted to achieve yeah. out of music. Yeah. And I, and I respect Kanye, too, because I feel like just making beats back then was so much, such a bigger yeah. process. It, it is. Because yeah. nowadays, everything is a little bit more digital. It's a lot easier to access. Like, yeah. back then, you had to go walk down to the record store, find a fucking a vinyl, sample that shit, do everything, like, manually. It was a lot. Like, yeah. A lot more went into it. And, and, and you know, what it all was, like, very inspiring, inspiring to me when I see Kanye is, like, one thing he has no problem doing is, like, redoing a track. Redoing right. it, redoing it, redoing it, and just like really getting it right. Mm-hmm. So like I kind of like the way I functioned before when I first started was more like, oh, let me just get this done, let me get this done, keep it moving, keep it moving. Right. I, it didn't come out the way I wanted, but you know what, I got it done. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna keep it moving, and like that, I feel like you can get a lot of like a lot more done that way, but like is not to your fullest potential. Did Kanye kind of teach you to be patient? Um, with making your beats, I feel like, I feel like he taught me more of having a vision for it. Okay. So, and the reason why I say is like one of the things he said in the documentary actually was he wanted to make so samples that sounded like it was sampled, but is original. And he literally got like a whole room, like literally like 50 people in a room. I saw that part. Got a mic and was like, sing this. And it's crazy to me because I forget the actual name of that song, mm-hmm. but like it's crazy. To th- me was it Jesus Walks? I I think it was Jesus Walks. It might have been. I know he used choirs before because I think they were working on the chorus part of that song, yeah, and they had yeah, the whole yeah. they had the whole like choir there, and yes. they were practicing, and they were trying. I think they were trying to find I don't know what key or tone they were trying. To, I don't, I'm not really sure. Yeah, like I remember him literally like kind of guiding everyone in the process of like, okay, I want everybody to come in this order. Oh, this it way. was through the wire. Yes, because I think he just got his jaw like yes, um, yes. That so, hook is so hard. Shout out to Kanye, man. He gets the horns. <laughs> yeah, and like in 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 that like one thing I always wondered was like where do you find that these type of samples or like how did he flip them? Because like the way he flips samples are like crazy too. Mm-hmm. But like I never knew that was something that he personally got and recorded himself. Mm-hmm. And I always thought that was something that he sampled. And it's like he was saying like he wanted to make like soulful like samples that sounded like it got sampled but it wasn't that's crazy you know? he was just so ahead of his time he really was i feel like he really was i feel like a lot of people see kind of like the antics that he goes through and kind mm-hmm. of overlook like the work ethic and what he actually does behind the scene like yeah you know like he would literally have a studio with like seven rooms and every single room is a song being made for his project and he will be bouncing in between each single room. That's productivity right there. You man. know, like that's crazy. Like people don't see that type of shit. I also you know? I also heard that he would bring in like poets, like word people that were like experts on lang- like certain languages and stuff just to just to find the best possible way to express what he's trying to say, which mm-hmm. I just thought that blew my mind when I saw that. I was like that's such a different level of like the creative process. I was yeah. like, I, I got a lot of inspiration from that. Yeah. Like in, and he would literally think about the words that he's saying. Like when he was doing kids, um, kids see ghosts mm-hmm. with uh, Kid Cudi. Mm-hmm. Um, when he was working on that, he was, he literally had like this one verse and like, they're like fucking with it. They're like, yeah, that shit's hard. But he's like, yeah, but like, I don't like these words because it has this negative kind of tone to it and whatever. And then like, he starts rewriting it on mm. the spot and he's really like he thinks about all the details that we like I would just we say kind we, of overlook yeah. those details yeah but we really do because it's like 
you we it's easy for us to just kind of listen and just be like, ah, oh, okay, he thought about that, cool. Mm-hmm. But like, you don't really think about like how much thought is actually put into it and how much work is actually put into it. Being that you kind of do the same thing, I feel like you have such a trained ear that you can appreciate those finer little details. Yeah, like I feel like, especially with the way I've like, like I said before, like I kind of would be like. I like to be in and out with what I'm doing Mm -hmm. and I I wouldn't say I'll be rushing it, but I'd be like, I just be so accepting to the ideas that I first come to me that I just like put it out. And if I like it, I keep it and I just keep it moving. Sometimes Mm -hmm. I like, I I had to learn to kind of like slow that down a little bit to fine tunes those ideas to make them pop out a little bit more. Interesting. That's interesting, dude. So your affiliation with Grindhouse, like how did that come to be? Like, what's your history with them? And like, just, just run me through the whole story. So, uh, I'm actually the co-founder of Grindhouse. Co-founder in the building. Yeah, and I, I, uh, I was with KG. Like, I remember. Shout out KG you know, in the background. One, like one day, he, like I don't know exactly where the conversation sparked, mm-hmm. but I remember he was telling me he would talk to his sister, and about like having like a movement. Mm-hmm. having a movement and then like one day like we're talking and he just brings up out of nowhere like i just see him and he just brings up like yo um how how you think about this logo and i'm like oh it looks pretty nice and he was like okay i'm thinking about calling making a, a team called grindhouse and like literally from right there like we just i was just like you know like i'm still kind of new to the music mm-hmm. but i was like i kind of like the idea of actually being in the team too because you know being in the team is very important especially one that you can really trust to like totally. actually like push you and work with you and actually like you like be there and actually like help you and guide you guys your, can sharpen your you iron know, and, together and, and man we evolve yeah. together and we mm-hmm. learn like you know working with someone a lot mm-hmm. you tend to learn a lot from them too you know like totally. you can learn from their craft and how their craft also can bleed into your own and how you like just evolve that way this is how we all develop our own sounds mm. you know with our time we don't just start making music and be like oh this is my sound like right, that's right. not no you're gonna spend a couple years best believe and mm-hmm. when you think you got it you don't really that's interesting it's very similar with like podcasting too like you might start a show and like kind of have an idea of like how you want your show to be and then just over time it evolves and morphs into something completely different yeah so I'm, I totally I'm pretty I, sure I all of that. the lights and the cameras were not there like this nope from the start oh, well, it was a long journey to get to yeah. just this part right here you know what right I mean? so like, I feel you on that so being a producer like I, I mean a lot of people don't really know what that essentially is entails because i feel like in music there's a lot of like blurred lines because i know you say you engineer too what's Mm -hmm. the difference between a producer and an engineer for just the people that don't know so a producer is someone who actually craft the instrumentals to that the artist tends to like you know get over you know right i feel like 99 percent music is like that there's also some like people out there put like spoken words there's no no instrumentals no no it's just them Mm -hmm. and that's fine or like battle rappers they don't have beats but like when it comes to like recorded music you tend to hear like an instrumental behind it so that could be like the trumpets the synths the drums whatever the case is like anything that adds that musical element with instruments Mm -hmm. that's what a producer would basically craft together to um form around the vocals um and then an engineer is just someone who is like is able to like there's like different kind of engineers Mm -hmm. so we have like uh recording engineers and i say this because there's a specialty and then there's people who, like, tend to learn everything, which I will fall in. Okay. So, like, we have, like, recording engineers who literally, like, they specialize in just recording things. They can record artists. They can record Foley. They record whatever. Anything that can be recorded, they record. So, was their job to basically have, like, the best sounding audio? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, like, their, their job is also if, like, you know, since we're talking about music, working with an artist, uh, our job is also to kind of set the vibe for the artist. When we come into okay. a room and the artist is just kind of like feeling weird, they're not going to really want to make anything. They're going to struggle know? to open up a little bit. Yeah. And okay. then I've seen I've seen where like the process, even like working with the engineer, like how their processes can also affect the artist too. where like if they're not really liking the pace the engineer is moving at, mm-hmm. it can kind of kill their own vibe, too. And they're not feeling the song anymore and it's not coming out the way that. Nobody wants it to sound, you know. So I feel like any, a recording engineer definitely needs to know how to set that. So he's vibe. got a big responsibility. So he's, he he essentially sets the tone of like how yes. this is gonna go, I you know. Think. And like, and the engineer's mood can also affect like the room too, because especially like if you're like in a certain headspace and it's not a good one, mm. people can feed off that, and people don't want to feed off bad energy. You know? oh, that's interesting. So like, when you go into a recording session, do you kind of have to like leave your fucking troubles and problems at the door and just kind of go in there like neutral minded? I wouldn't say. 
that's I wouldn't say necessarily leaving your troubles behind. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I would say more like being able to like kind of like um I guess I guess you're right. Like the way I would explain, I feel like a little bit of yeah. emotion is probably good because that yeah. kind of translates into music. Because yeah, music is like emotion. If, it, if it's a if it's a good vibe, definitely come in with that. Yeah, because I don't want to work. I don't want my producer to be pissed off at something that happened at work. Right, like, something that you know what I mean. And, then come and in if, here with that if you're gonna come into a room pissed off, you better know how to make some music pissed off. You, you gotta know? be able. To, you gotta be able to like transfer that energy somehow yes. and make it positive. You know, I that's why like I tend to create my music based on how I feel because like if I'm if in the moment I'm feeling a certain type of way, mm -hmm. it's also a very healthy way to like kind of express those type of like moods and emotions that one person is going through through your music. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like how you you can hear an artist say, "Oh, music is like therapy." That's mm -hmm. exactly what it is because you're like allowing yourself to openly express yourself. You gotta be right. in a comfortable place for that. You know, so you know, and that's what why I kind of feel like a recording engineer needs to also understand and like be able to work with is making that artist comfortable. Whatever every artist that walks in the door is not the same. There's some artists that are easier to work with because they're more open to it and they're not as close minded. Mm -hmm. There's other artists who are like kind of like you know, like and this is no offense to if you're like in this category, but like kind of in their heads in certain aspects in their lives or in certain aspects in their craft, like that right. also translate to like how the vibe in the room is and how you work off with the engineer. Mm. Now, how do you like when you work with somebody and like let's say maybe like you want to suggest a better way that they either like lay a vocal or something like like how is it difficult to kind of tell somebody like hey the way you have it is not the best it could sound like how do you go about approaching that? Um. It's got to be difficult sometimes, huh? It, it it depends on the artist. For sure. You know, Everybody's like, different. there's some artists that I've worked with that would be, like, very open to the idea of, like, actually getting advice and be like, oh, okay. Like, I've been there. I've ghostwritten before because, like, I'll hear, like, oh, okay, they're a little offbeat because they have one extra syllable. Like, maybe if I tell them to, like, change, like, a, a phrase or, like, a certain, like, two words and you could just say, instead of saying have not, you could have said can't. You okay, know, right. that saves you a syllable and that fits better in the flow. So, like, if I if like if I have a suggestion like that, I would like bring it up mm -hmm. or I would like kind of be like, oh, you're off beat. You came in too early. You came in too late, whatever. I could do that. But there's also some artists where like you can't do that because they'd be like, you don't know what you're talking about. They're going to base. they're like know-it-alls. They feel like they're, they're always like, right. like and they were shut down completely. I've seen I've been in sessions where like the artists actually shut down completely and just like. I don't want to record no more and just walked out. Wow. The booth, like, just nah, not with it no more. I feel like that's a big part is, like, just being able to check your ego at the door. Because, I mean, you want, if the guy that is producing your song or engineering your song, they know what the fuck they're doing. Right. You know what I mean? You know, and, and, and I mean, like, it is a little tricky, too, because, like, sometimes you just don't see the vision the artist has. Right. Because, like, if you really listen to music nowadays and what actually blows up, mm -hmm. it's not always good music. That's a very good point. You know, like, there was this one song recently that was like, I'm going to go get this bag. And they literally just recorded a bag. Shh, shh, shh. It sounded bad, but like it blew up. It was all over TikTok for no reason. Like they were literally making memes out of it, but does it that, still blew up. Does that know? aggravate you as a producer? Like when you hear something, you're like, ah, this is like, um, you know, not really. Yeah. I feel like I'm not, I feel like at least right where I am now, maybe like it was early. I just be like, why is this blowing up? But like mm -hmm. now, nowadays I just kind of feel like, you know, it's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's kind of like it kind of assures me that, you know, what I know isn't necessarily the only way. And I just have to kind of be open to the idea. So it's like, like I said, like it's kind of tricky when it comes to an artist who has a certain vision. Mm -hmm. it, it could be good. It could be bad. It might just not be for me. Right. You know, like I, if I tell you, like, I feel like you could do this better. That's still my personal opinion. OK. You know, I, I don't know all the answers. I'm not a fat checker or anything like it's mm -hmm. still my opinion, you right. know, like you, you still know what you like. Mm, okay. So you're now, do you treat this like a, like, how does it, how does like a, like what's a typical day in the life of like a producer? Like, how do you, is it like kind of like a nine to five? Like, do you have like a set schedule? Like, cause I'm sure um, it's probably really unorthodox cause a lot of people record very, really at late night. Very, like, yeah, run me through that. So, uh, right now I'd say it's very unorthodox. So like I, I work a nine to five, I work in a kitchen. Okay. You no. Know, and then I do engineering, I do producing, I do, uh, my own artwork. I do, uh, I've been getting into a lot of video editing. I've you, been man. trying to do live streaming. Mm -hmm. and I'm also doing like Uber. I'm like anything that can make me money too. Like 
I got to make that. That's what's up. That doesn't matter to me. However, like money be green and I'm going to like stick with that. Now, when you know. say, when you say live stream, like, do yeah. you mean like you live stream and then you're like, you'll cook up a beat like right on like stream? I've, I've done that one time mm-hmm. where I literally just, I just. I know learned. T-Pain does that a yeah, lot. Yeah, because like Twitch. So, so I've been kind of digging into live streaming you know, on Twitch in particular because like, all right, so the PlayStation, mm-hmm. I don't know if any, if you know this, but like it's possible to live stream off your PlayStation to Twitch. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I fucked around so, with Twitch a little bit in the past, so, a little bit, yeah. You know, and like, I and like, I feel like there's so much possibility in that because, like, if you're playing games and you're making music, you you're already on your own setting out differently than someone else. Like T Pain, like you said, right? Like he kind of like was a big inspiration as far as that goes for me because it's like that's dope. I get to play games and make music. Yeah, they go hand like, in hand. You feel me? Like that's dope. It's it's all entertainment too. Mm-hmm. You know. So like, I I literally bought like these. Big ass like fucking photo lights in that like the high beam that's just super hot. Yeah, oh yeah. I bet. Yeah, those yeah. lights generate so much fucking heat, dude. Yeah, Even like, these right here, like these yeah, are I'm already feeling I it. I feel it's it too. Crazy. Yeah, I feel I'm, all, yeah. I'm, far, I'm farther away mm-hmm. from it than you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like I literally would like um I literally got those lights and I'm literally like getting things for live streaming mm-hmm. and I went on Twitch just to see how like the lights look like. I got so excited. I got the lights. I go on Twitch. I'm making beats. I just made three beats, and they're like, I, I don't know. I really like. There's something about like having someone watching me craft that like really puts me in a zone where like, okay, I'm gonna make this. And right. I'm gonna this it kind of like helps you dial in a little bit more. Really it's a little does. bit of like healthy pressure. You know, one of the biggest things that it helps me with mm-hmm. not looking at my phone while I'm crafting because like there'll be times where like like I said like I'll fine tune ideas. So there'll be times where like I'll, I'll like if I'm mixing or I'm I'm, I'm making a beat. Mm-hmm. You know, or I'll literally let a section play and I'm just playing with an idea in my head and I'm just kind of like marinating with it. I'm just trying to come up with what possibly could work that I, I feel like, you know, um, mm-hmm. and I feel like when sometimes when I'm in those like little moments, I literally just grab the phone. I read a few messages and I, I get do distracted. The same thing. Yeah, I, I don't like that. You know, and when someone is watching me live, like, it's actually a lot harder for me to just pull up the phone and just be like, hold on, let me respond to this call and five text messages. Give me, like, 15, 30 minutes. Okay. You know, because, like, shit happens like that. Like, it literally literally starts with one message for me, and then, like, it would turn into five, and then it would turn into ten, and I'm just like... And then you're on your phone for 30 minutes, and that's 30 minutes lost of productivity. You know, I wouldn't say I lost productivity. Uh, I lost that because, mm-hmm. like, I tend to try to talk to people in the music industry. Like, okay, okay, okay. You know, like, mm-hmm. I try to be as, you know, if I'm on the phone, I'm going to try to find a way to be productive with that. You know, I'm, That's, you know, if it's right. not me talking to someone, I'm watching a video, I'm doing research. You're making plans, I'm setting making sessions. Plans, you know, I'm thinking, yeah. I'm, com- I'm learning new strategies. I'm learning new different parts of the industry, learning new mixing techniques, new producing techniques. Because there's a lot of things out there that mm-hmm. even like now where I am, I still don't know. You know, and I'm still learning. I'm still mm-hmm. growing because there's just so much out there. Like I've, I've learned in my lane. But then when I start to see other people and what their lanes are, they, those producers and those engineers tend to, like, inspire me with those different ideas. And, like, I could really run with it and then, like, learn and kind of make it my own mm-hmm. and, like, kind of play my own twist to it. Or I can just, like, literally just learn how to do something more properly, you know? Because, mm-hmm. like, again, there's just so many details out there that, like, we don't, we just don't you have You can never really, you can't even cover all of them. You can't. You, you can't really even think of all of it. You know, like they're just like every engineer mixes differently, you know. Now, how do you know when a song is done? Like, how do you know when to like put down the paintbrush and be like, so, okay, this is done? Well, um, I struggle I, with that sometimes. So if I'm like finishing a mix for an artist, I like what I tend to do is I kind of let the song play at least like three, four times. I I mix everything in mono too. So like I, okay. this, like these headphones don't really matter. Like that space, that reverb. When and, you say mix in mono, what does that mean? Um, so like your headphones right now are stereo. So you have like two headphones. So like, so the way everything right now is connected to you is you have two signals. You have one playing on your left ear and one playing on your right ear. Right. They're not the same. They're like separate completely. So you can do this and still hear everything normally. It just sounds a little weird because you have one ear off. Right, right, right. Uh But like you have two different signals there and one's playing left and one's playing right. You can go in there in the mixer and you can pan stuff to the left and to the right. Right. And that's what's playing with your headphones. That's what's playing with the speakers. If you have like car speakers, you got your left speakers, your right speakers. You'll always see that left and that right. Right. Because that's kind of like 
the standard nowadays as stereo. That's what really people hear, and, like, you really can feel the music that way, too. Right. You know, and, like, nowadays they have, like, this thing called Adobe's, um, I forget, but, like, it's crazy because it's, like, a 3D space, and they'll literally have, like, 13 speakers. They'll have one up over here, oh, here, wow. here, here, in this corner, this corner, this corner, and you can literally just, and there's even plugins out there. I have one of them where, like, it'll literally emulate that 360 the degree versus mm -hmm. just the left and right. Now, and does that does that help you when you're mixing? Because you can hear the sound a little bit more full. Like I fully? feel like I feel like if you're mixing with that type of like panning and stuff like that, it's more for the experience than mm -hmm. it is for like mixing. So like the reason why I mix in mono, mm -hmm. mono basically turns that two signals into one. Okay, you know, so like that left and right pan it doesn't exist so you would only hear it out of one on one side of your it, headphone it, whatever you hear on your left side at that point you hear on your right side okay and it's exactly the same there's nothing special about in betweens um everything is just dead center so like that's like when you're like listening to a song and then like you'll hear like one lyric in like r the right side of your headphone and then it'll pan over into the left is that yeah. I've, like I've heard you that ever it, yeah, it, yeah. like a good example like uh um like would be like um if you listen to like music now like, say the song that I had. Mm -hmm. and if I had, like, oh, no, this song didn't have any. But, like, on a normal song, I would have, like, in and outs and outlets. Usually, we pan them to the sides mm -hmm. just so it would give you more space in the middle. But, like, the sides kind of help bring that space in the mansion. That really makes you feel like you're in a space. You know, that's the point of that stereo is to make you feel like you're in a space. You can feel it better. It would, like, you know, yeah. and the mono, it, it's a little weird because it's only one signal. You don't really have a sense of space, mm. but it's for me, it's important when I mix just because like I'm able to hear you exactly how you sound in the dead center. If I can't get you to sound good in the in, in the mono mix, it won't not, sound good in the stereo. You, mix. you won't because you're going to lose those words in space. That's interesting. You know, like th that space really does matter. Wow. And like. It, it gets, like, even with messing with space, it's, like, very, like, it sounds very mundane to people. When you say, you like, know? what do you mean when you say space? Like, space, elaborate on that a little bit. Like, um, so, like, a very common thing that we would put, like, in a mix is reverb. So, a right. reverb kind of emulates a, a space, like a an room. E like an echo. A room. Right, yeah. So, like, this right here, like, technically, if we have the right plugins or right reverb plugin, you can emulate this exact room. By the number of walls, by the number of how big the actual room That's is, amazing. the diffusion is. It's like, it's a lot of more details even inside of reverb that can emulate different. Like, you could sound like you're in the bathroom or you could sound like you're in out in the hall right. or in a concert. You know, it could be very big. It could be very small, very mm -hmm. tight. or And, like, that, I feel like that's kind of, like, the best way I can kind of, like, explain it. And it's like how you said, like, it tends to be, like, a little echo. Because that's kind of like what sound is. It's like when right. I'm speaking to you, technically, like I'm facing you in that corner. My my sound waves are hitting the corners right there and they're bouncing off those walls. And because they're bouncing, they're just going to keep bouncing around the room. Those are the echoes that you actually hear. That's interesting. So you probably, you had to like really break down like to the sounds, like the molecular level to like really like understand like, it. Like I said, like I would do a lot of research. I would literally like whatever like I'm working with, I have to understand what I got. Right. You know, I... I don't have the best plugins that you see in all these super huge studios that that they spend eight hundred dollars on a plugin. Like there's plugins out there like that. I've seen. Them, I yeah. don't have that type of money, mm -hmm. but I do know the effects, and I'm gonna find a way to emulate it as much as I can. In order to do that, I have to understand what I have. See, I feel like that's more impressive, the fact that you can emulate that same sound without having that plug-in just by knowing and understanding what it is. I feel like that's more impressive. You know, it's like how you say before this uh, podcast started. Is like you know, you're limited in, in your limit, limited, like, um, available tools mm -hmm. that sparks creativity. It and definitely you did. You really have to, like, think about it in such a, a way that helps you emulate those things that you're really looking Bro, for. Bro, when we started, when we started Whiskey Wonders, we were filming that shit on, like, webcams. <laughs> and, like, it, like, forced me to make, like, my edits, like, dope. You know right. what I mean? No, so, I feel that, though. Like, that makes a lot of sense. Because the video quality was trash. Right. It was just really pixelated. It just didn't look detailed. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I had to, like, really make sure that, like, the editing was fucking, like, the transitions were crisp. Like, yeah. the overlays were dope. Everything was on point, on timing. You know what I mean? So I, I feel you on that. Yeah, you know, like, if, if, I feel like, to be honest, uh, nowadays at least, I feel like the quality doesn't truly matter to a lot of consumers just as long as it's dope music. 
you know, a, and, it's a dope, and it's a dope visualizer and it's something that could keep their attention. That's cool. Like, you know, like you could see videos on YouTube, lyric videos. It's nothing but words, but yeah. they generate a lot more than a picture. Interesting. You know, and sometimes I've seen those lyric videos look a lot better than music videos. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, and they do better sometimes. You know, it really depends yeah, on the, the lyric song. videos have way more views than the actual official video. Right. Well, that's you know? interesting. So, you know, I feel like, you know, as long as you're able to actually, um, in, in like, keep their attention with your music, mm-hmm. that's what matters the most. Now, how do you, like, what's, like, what's a... I guess, like, what's, like, a main element to, like, keeping the attention of your music? Like, what, 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 like, how would you draw somebody into your sound? Like, what's something that you would, you know, as a producer, maybe, like, you know the secret? Like, how would you get somebody to hook to your song? So, um, how would I know? That's interesting. Um, I'd say, like, the best way I'd probably say is, like, really go to people who don't make music. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. they're the people who's actually going to listen to the music. They're easily impressed. You know, they, they could be easily impressed, but, like, Let's say I'm just playing a song. I'm playing back to you just randomly, and I'm mm-hmm. just playing it, and someone's just vibing to it, and then they're like, hey, who's that? All right, I know I'm doing something right. You get what I'm saying? Right. Because not only are they the consumers, they're the people that I should be targeting, not our other artists, producers, the engineers. I really should be going after the people who are not making music. Right. You know, if I can't draw their attention, like, I'm not really... Like, I have to go... Like, it's, it's not me or my content is the music. Okay. You know, like sometimes you have to like be a little bit honest with what you're making and actually be like, okay, is this actually listenable? It is like me telling like, again, like saying, just playing the song randomly and people are like kind of vibing with it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're doing something right. Right. You know, if it's someone you're showing your friend, they could just be like, oh yeah, that's dope. But that's your friend. You Mm -hmm. know, there's a little bias to it. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to get an unbiased opinion. So that's when you know, like, your record's dope and, like, an unbiased opinion is vibing to it is usually the good indicator? You know, so, like, like for example, I have this song called Show Me Tonight. I dropped it on February. Okay. And then um, I remember one day I was just driving to Target, and I I was in the car, and I just had the song blasting. And I literally had a red light, windows down. I think um, I was trying to, like, throw something out or some shit. I think I was ashing. You were littering, huh? Nah, I was... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, nah, I think I was asking or something or whatever. But I had the window down and like literally next to me, like the there's two girls right next to me in the car, they pulled up. They don't have any music playing or anything. And they literally listen to what I'm blasting and they're like, Oh shit, like they're getting hype off and they're right next to me. And I was like, Okay, see like if I can get your attention like that, that made you I feel know, good. I huh? know yeah, oh yeah. That's the definitely, best. definitely made me feel good. That's the best. It's like that's like that's like Because that doesn't react. really happen, that you know. Does, it doesn't it's so random, unexpected, but it's like it also reassures me that like I'm I'm going down the right path, you know, because from me where I am now moving forward, I'm only going to get better. Totally. You know, and I'm going to like understand things a lot more. You know, I'm going to be able to uh, apply all of those things that I've learned a lot better. Mm -hmm. You know, and if uh, like if right now I can get your attention, I know like this song is going to it's going like this. This is definitely going out because it's like. If random people can get the, if I can get their attention, they're five if they start dancing. That's tight, yeah. They start dancing. At a stoplight? Yeah, like, that's crazy. To that's me. hard, like, bro. Like, I, I'm proud of t- to say stuff like that. That's you know? fucking dope. And sometimes, yeah. like, it's, like, I don't really tell people this. Oh, yeah, my SoundCloud don't got anything. I know you're searching that. <laughs> <laughs> my man's on it, yo. Nah, I love nah, that. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, uh, my SoundCloud is really made for, like, private links so like if okay. i have a mix i would literally and i don't want to send it to the email because i ain't get paid yet and i don't know i my first time working with them i just sent a private link on soundcloud and just send it mm-hmm. that's kind of what my soundcloud is for i'm not even gonna lie i should take it off my socials <laughs> now as a as a producer like i feel like you got to be like really careful when you put instrumentals on the internet because i i, I, heard, I saw an interview with murder beats and he was like he used to send little snippets out to people and they would just chop it and loop it and then basically get a free beat. So right. like, what are like the precautionary things that you do to ensure that your music doesn't um, get stolen on the internet? Cause that's such a, that's such a fucking crazy thing, right. you know? So as you can see my YouTube, I don't really post my beats for that reason. Cause they can but steal it so yeah. easily off YouTube. I, I do have like, if you hit playlist, I'm guilty of that low key. If you hit playlist, you're actually going to see uh, 
Lost in Base, Memorial, Gemini Dreams. Those are my outro projects okay. that I put out. And Show Me Tonight, which was I was talking about earlier. Yeah, tell me so, about that. That's the newest one you, you got, right? Dropping July 15th, right? Oh, uh, no. Show Me Tonight came out in February. Um, the song that's coming out now, that one is called Back to You. Back to You. Yeah, 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 yeah. and okay, the, okay, okay. they're both for my upcoming project I'm dropping in September called Soul Music Volume 1. What was the inspiration behind Back to You? Back to You? Yeah, tell me, t- tell me a little bit about uh, that record, man. So, um, it's actually more of like how I heard the track list. So like I'm crafting like collab projects, you know, Okay. basically. Mm-hmm. So basically I'll make a beat and then I will kind of, I'm talking to a bunch of artists and I'm just like, hey, yo, I really fuck with you. You're a cool dude. If I send you this beat, can you write me a hook or a verse? And they'd be like, sure. They'll send me something. And then they'll send me the stems. I can mix it now. So then I got a hook and then I'll just ask someone else like, yo, I feel like you really vibe with this one right here can you hop on this one whatever and then like i'm just kind of re- uh, arranging it you know some workout you're kind of like the hit maker you'll be like oh you sound good on this oh you sound you sound yeah, good on the like, hook That's i'm dope. literally i'm literally looking for people that i feel like will work with this you know mm-hmm. and then like so while i'm doing that like um i did lost in bases my first one i dropped two years ago and i'm 20 or i dropped it in like 2020 i believe Lost in bass, I like that. I like that. Yeah, and then um, and I kind of gave it like a space theme. It was supposed to be a pun on space. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I got Gemini Dreams, so I'm actually a Gemini. Okay, I figured. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And then uh, I'm like May 22nd, so I'm like the second day Gemini, and so I dropped Gemini Dreams first day Gemini season May 21st. Now, Gemini Dreams, do you like? How would you? How did you tie in being a Gemini into those beats? Um, I really try to give them a lot more spacious vibes to them. Because okay. I feel like, you know, when you think about, like, Because the Gemini is, like, you know, they have two different signs. Sign. Yeah. Like, the, the Zodiac signs, because that's kind of, like, the inspiration of it is, like, Zodiac signs. They mm-hmm. tend to deal with, like, the stars and space and stuff like that. So right. when I, whenever I'm thinking of that, I try to get, like, beats that are more on the spacious side, especially when it comes to, like, synths and stuff. Because I feel like synths really emulate space a lot better than, like, live instruments. Right, okay. So, like, I try to find a lot more, like, spacious beats and then like uh sometimes you know i would send a song to someone and they would just put some like space references i'd be like oh that's fucking perfect yeah, yeah that's yeah. like kind of like what i'm playing off right now too like any any space like uh, when it, when it was those projects at least like any like space related um metaphors and stuff like i feel like would be ex- extra dope on a project that's like has that kind of theme to it you know for sure for sure you know so um my current on um, memorial is a beat tape that I worked on. I just kind of wanted like like that's really when I started like taking my time with my projects, and I would literally sit there and just kind of like think of like different type of ways of making beats, mm-hmm. really short, and try to keep them really interesting for that little bit. It's now you you said making short beats is that because of like the way music is trending now? It's becoming a lot more shorter. Like I've noticed that like you don't really see a whole lot of like four or five minute songs anymore. Yeah. Um, is that just because of like TikTok and the social media and just that, you I've, know, that whole, I've, that whole I've market? I feel like it, it, it might be a little sad to hear, but like it really is the attention span. And I yeah. feel like shit really do like be coming out so fast, so quick and like out of nowhere. Like sometimes, especially me, like I don't really got that much time to just listen to music just because like if right. I'm driving, like I'm driving here, I took like two and a half hours to get here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to listen to music. I got the time now, but like right. for the most part, I'm either working, I'm in the studio. I don't really got time to like listen to music like that. So when I do listen to music, the shorter songs tend to keep my attention a lot more because I can listen to it and then go on to the next one. I'm like, right. oh, I fuck with that vibe, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm going on to the next song or I could replay it a lot better too. Like if I'm really inspired by something, I'll, I don't care how long it is though. Do you think they make, they're making music shorter now just because of like, strategically streaming because like if your song is shorter that means it can get streamed more in a day than it would be if it was like a four or five minute song right i feel like that does play a factor it has to right yeah it definitely does because i do have some songs where i'm just like um i have this one song on lost and bass called um no role models okay so that song has like four artists you know, okay. KG, okay. I had KG, I have Falzo Skywalker, Dang Dizzy, and then Retract. You can see all the names there. Wow, that's and, dope. And because there's four artists and the beat was a little slower, you can see it's five minutes that's long. All, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know? Wow, it's a five minute and, long, yeah, yeah. And I was like, dang, five minutes is long, but it's crazy to me because it was actually longer before because we have a hook. So oh, shit. We, KG did a hook and a verse. So he gave me a hook, a verse, 
And then we had uh, the hook come back in, retract. We had the hook, dang dizzy, and then the hook, and then falls to Skywalker. I'm like, bro, that this song is like six minutes at this point. <laughs> I gotta cut it down a little bit. Like yeah. at some point, like I try to cut it down, but I ain't want to cut nobody's part out. Like, right, that, you know, right, and like right, we right. had a hook for a reason. So I just kind of like arrange it best, the best I could to not be too long, but like. I try to keep it in mind, but, you know, like, it's a lot of people on there, so it's going to be long. So, like, I just kind of have to accept that it's going to be right. five minutes, three seconds. Yeah, you got you five know? guys on the song. It's probably going to be a five-minute song. Yeah. yeah. Like, but, I mean, the song, this song, like, on my, I don't know why, but, like, it's probably, like, the most popular, the second most popular song on that project, and or the third, actually, streaming number-wise. But, like, mm -hmm. this one, for some reason, people would listen to it, and they would hit me up about it. Does that ever weird you out? Like, like a beat that you're kind of like whatever about? Yeah, is like oh, going no, crazy. I, I really fuck with this one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> no, I fuck with ro no role models. I remember hearing it, and I was just like so hype and just like having like each bit and part because it didn't happen all at once. I didn't have all four of them at once. Right. And, you know, I worked with KG and we did that part. Retrack. Um, he doesn't live in Florida. He lives in a whole other state. I forgot it was, uh, what state it is. Mm -hmm. Um, he kind of stopped doing music, so I just kind of like lost track of him you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then dang dizzy he's from uh california if i remember correctly he also stopped posting music as well ah shit so you know it's you know i've seen that you know as you can see that like, probably happens a lot huh uh, i've i've been in chats where literally i would see producers and engineers be like i'm done with this shit like, <sighs> literally and just it sucks to see but like it happens yeah you know and people got and, lives they do things move on you know right you know and then father skywalker he's he's down here in um broward uh, and like he like I remember that's a, that's a fire rap name you yeah. know and, and it's like it's interesting how he got onto the song because he was like hitting me up and he was like yo I'm trying to get in the studio I'm trying to record something yeah. and I was like okay that's dope and he was like yo if you got any open verses send it my way I want to hear it and I sent him this song he literally calls me like five minutes later he's like hey yo who else is hopping on that song <laughs> yeah. and I was like oh I have uh, this dude think Dizzy gonna hop on he's like alright all right, check me out. Yeah, put me on that bitch. Nah, he was like, I'm on that. <laughs> he didn't give me the option. He just said, I'm on that. He's like, that I'm on already. the song, bro. Yeah, I already, got, I already got like 12 bars written already. Like, I'm going to be on the song. That's and dope. I was like, dang, that's crazy. Because like, I wasn't really, I was really trying to have like three people because I already knew it was going to be long. Mm -hmm. But I like what I heard, like I got dang dizzy vocals and I put it in there. And it then just made I, sense. And then I heard Fonzo and I was like, oh, like he actually like went hard. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to keep that on there. So that's just kind of like how that came out. Like a lot of these things don't happen like in a week or two. They happen like because of other people's schedules and I'm just kind of working off. That it. was my next question. Like how long would it take you to make a project like this? Like what's the time so frame? So if, all right. So Cause I'm probably, it's probably different for every project, right? Um, it depends on the song and who I ask, you right. know? So like I've had a song that can take, like it could have been in the vault for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, like, it could have been in the vault. It could have been already made. It just didn't come to light because, you know, how things play out. Mm -hmm. Or, like, that song in particular, I waited, like, two months to get a verse from Dang Dizzy. Mm. So, like, you know, I had to wait, like, two months for that, you know. Yeah. Or there's, like, this one song in Gemini Dreams called um, This World. And that's with KG, Icy Crazy. He's also in Grindhouse. Mm -hmm. And, like, I remember him. He lived with me for, like, a while. And... It was his last day. He was going to New Jersey. Oh, shit. So, like, and right before he was leaving, like, two hours before he was leaving, I, I was just on FL. I was like, yo, I want to try this mixing technique, whatever. Like, come over here, just freestyle. I don't care what you say. Just freestyle. And I just laid down a piano, and he freestyles over it. And it just kind of, like, sits there in the vault for a little bit. It, it sits there for so long. Like, I was fucking with it, but it sits mm -hmm. there so long that, like, one day, he, while he, like, a month later, he hits me up, and he's like, yo, uh, what happened to this song, This World? And I was like, oh, I forgot about that. And I play, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of dope. I was with KG at the time. Yeah, yeah. And I play, and KG was like, oh, I'm kind of fucking with it. And then <laughs> I was like, yeah, like, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to do something with it. He was like, for real? And, like, and uh, I was just telling him how he freestyled. And he's like, all right, cool. Just put it up. Like, I'll freestyle over it, too. That's just like that. And, like, yeah. and, it, and I told him, like, it was like a freestyle. So I literally had to chop it up mm -hmm. and rearrange it to, like, make sense for whatever Damn. the song I wanted it to be. Yeah. So, like, I remember KG doing, like, 64 bars. Damn. And I didn't use all of it because I was like, I'm not, 
that's a long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I put in like 24 bars or so yeah. into the song. So I had to chop it up and I had to rearrange it and fit it in there. And like just because of that process, that took a couple months. And then um, like and then I also like got this other artist, um, producer that's in Grindhouse. His name is Good Day. Mm-hmm. Um, or he goes by Good Day now. It used to be Marathon. But um, hmm. I remember... Uh, like sending him the like after all the freestyles i was like dang like i feel like it's only a piano i need something else on there and mm-hmm. i know he can, he had a guitar that mm-hmm. he could play so i asked him like yo can you play the guitar over this beat i'm gonna give you the key in the temple just you know do what you gotta do mm-hmm. and then he sent me like six takes and i literally chopped that up same way chop it up yeah and i arrange it into the song and then i added some drums to it and i just felt like it was a nice little vibe so i kind of uh, like and you know and i i like the purpose of it was like kind of like you know i gave it like its own purpose while i was creating it so like i created at like at that moment what i felt like that purpose served you know so mm-hmm. like and but like that whole process took a couple months just because of like here and there we'll touch base on it right and and more people kept getting involved in it Wow. So you, you'll find a beat and then like you won't really finalize until months later. Like when you have everybody on there, it all makes sense. You yeah. got, got, all the timing and schedules correlate. Wow. That's a lot. It's yeah. crazy. So like, yeah. Like, and, and one thing I've done with this current project I'm working on, Soul Music, mm-hmm. is that like I actually was, li- I had like, uh, I made like 23 songs. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. But I'm not using all 23. There was actually like I literally started handpicking the ones that I like the most lyric wise. OK. F, you know, like, oh, OK, I like how these all lyrics kind of play off each other. So I started like arranging it and I started like kind of forming like a little storyline kind of thing. OK. And I just based on everybody's random verses that they don't even know the next song is going to correlate. You know, and yeah. it, it literally is just how everything kind of turned out and all the verses I was getting, all the songs. I ended up picking out 11 songs mm-hmm. that I really felt like they fit in this order. Really and they well. all tie in together in order. Yeah. That's fucking but, interesting. But because I did it that way, I had the problem of like some of the songs didn't blend well together, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. just in the track list. And I just I like the, the lyric concept of everything. Right. But the beats weren't translating or transitioning, I should say, as well as others. Okay. So, like, I literally went in there and started changing some of the beats. Mm. So, like, I can have, like, all of that that transitions be a lot smoother and a lot better, and it also, like, follows the concept of what I was doing with the lyrics, Mm -hmm. which was trying to tell a story without, like, my voice. Obviously, I'm not, like, really speaking into the mic Mm -hmm. necessarily, but... Like, I'm using everybody else's voice to kind of tell this storyline all together without, like, obviously, like, it wasn't intentional for them. But for me, it was intentional. So I literally start changing. And back That's to amazing. Yeah. And back to you is actually one of those that I did that with. Mm-hmm. So, like, initially, I kind of made that song to be very pop, like, right. you know, commercial pop. Okay. You know, but then when I play next to all the songs, it really stood out because it was like the one most happiest song yeah, ever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, yeah. very upbeat yeah. and very, you know, and like I just felt like it didn't fit. Like mm. the lyrics could fit, yeah. but, but the, beat the beat didn't, didn't fit. fit. Yeah. So I literally went in there and I just thought of, of the idea of what the song was before and the song after. And I like the change I really wanted was a tonal change in mm. the beat. So, like, the beats, the two songs before that was a little bit more down, a bit more, like, on the sad side of things, Mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I kind of wanted, like, this song is called Back to You, and it's, like, also a love song. And I felt like, you know, when you say Back to You, it's like you had this change in you. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. That that really made you want to be like, okay, I tried something different, but I wasn't fucking with it. I'm going to come back, you know? Right. Back to you. So, with the beat, I decided to give it a very like the Afro pop vibe, that dance hall vibe to yeah. it because I really liked that energy that it came with. It was very different, especially compared to a lot of the songs in the project. It's very different, and it had that tonal change that I wanted. Interesting, damn, that's fucking interesting, man. So you can make you can basically make a record like have it all flow and basically have like a storyline within the fucking tape. That's amazing, dude. Just from just from random people's lyrics yeah. and the way that you place it. Yeah, that's I, incredible, bro. Uh, like to me, it was crazy. This is like me personally. I feel like this is my best project just because like how everything just kind of tied in. Everything is yeah. very cohesive, and I really made sure like every single song can trans transition 
like however I wanted it to, mm-hmm. you know, like really make it. And also what was also important to me was also making sure each song could stand on its own. Like I could just show you one song, you yeah. like, oh yeah, I fuck with that, you know. But then when you hear the whole project, is like a whole other meaning behind it. That's, see, that's interesting. I never thought of it like that. Like the songs can stand alone solely as singles, but then when you put them all together, it still makes sense. That's yeah. interesting. See, I don't even see that's cra- that's the cool thing about being a producer and what you do is just the fucking minute details that make the record like not a good record but a great record. Right. That's really interesting, dude. Yeah, it's those very minute things that people overlook. I start to like learn to kind of appreciate and also dive myself into Mm -hmm. and like um i haven't made as many beats now than i did dior was saying oh he don't send us these type of beats but like (laughs) i can't talking shit (laughs) (laughs) but like i mean it's just like one of those things where like i really sat down and i really had like me personally i'm sitting here i have a vision for something i'm gonna try my best to like formulate that Mm -hmm. you know but like you know, like say sending beats is kind of tough for me. I don't really send beats out to a lot of people. A lot of times, right. I'm there with the artist and I'm cooking. It's up probably smart people. that you don't do that, dude. Just yeah, the way they it, can it, fucking it, steal it, shit nowadays, you know? Right, and and I also feel like it's better to actually like sit there and actually craft with the producer because you start to learn like okay this is the vibe that we're really working on, and if you're able to communicate with that artist and that producer, their communication is really good. You can start going to details with the song that just really stands out completely different from other songs that they have in their catalog. Okay, interesting. You know, like yeah. I, I have this one song with Sailor Santana. He's mm-hmm. also in Grindhouse. Yep. And um, we have this song called Tiffany's Intro, which mm-hmm. is coming out for Day Prince. That's coming out on um, July twentieth. And Fuck yeah. And I feel like he told me like that song like he tried to find beats that are like that but he just can't Mm -hmm. and that's one of those beats that we literally sat there for two hours can't be emulated can't be replicated we sat there for two hours true original yes we we did like i believe if i remember correctly we had like three samples in there wow you know and then i also was he was telling me like he wanted me to switch up the bass that i used i was like you know like I sound design too, you know, and he's like, what does that mean? And I was like, I can make that bass sound like what I wanted to. And I like put on this plugin and I just started messing with the distortion. Like it was this crazy ass distortion that I found. And it was like so crazy to him. He was literally getting so hyped next to me. And he was like, bro, do you not hear what you're making right now? <laughs> I was like, I'm kind of there because I'm like so focused. I'm kind of like dead face. I'm just like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, and then yeah. he's like, bro, do you not hear what you're making right now? Like the bass sounds crazy. That's it's tight. like it's like a huge disgusting growl but that's gotta be a cool feeling to make a beat and then like never hear another beat like that yeah that's tight i love to hear things like that that's fucking dope you man. know because that just mean like i did exactly what i should have i should have been producing and making that vibe for you fuck yeah you know and especially when like you're there and you're actually communicating with me kj can tell you this all the time you drop og prodigy I did like nine of those beats and all nine of Shout those. Shout out OG Prodigy, man. Streaming on all platforms. Go stream that shit. <laughs> yes, sir. And like, and even on OG Prodigy, like I did nine of those beats and all nine of those, no, eight of those beats, we sat there and we created together. That's cool as fuck, dude. You know? Yeah. Like, I think the only one that didn't like that, that wasn't the case was Wake Up, which was the intro song. And that was just like, I was just playing random beats and I was like, oh, this one's a little weird. I don't know how you feel about it. And I just play and he was just like, ding, ding, ding. and he was like, bro, send that. what are you doing? <laughs> Dude, that tape was fire, man. I bump yeah. it all the time, bro. No, I'm glad to hear that. Hell yeah. Bro. Well, we're coming up on an hour, man. Is there anything you want to talk about that we haven't covered? Um, Soul Music Volume 1 drops September 2nd. September 2nd. Yes. You heard him. And I'm also dropping Back to You is one of the singles for my project. It comes out July 15th. And you know, just stream it. I'm ready. I'm very excited to actually like like have that out there. Like I'm really like trying to push it in a different way that I normally have promoted before. Mm-hmm. So like I'm very excited for that track, and I'm extremely excited about the project too. I'm fucking excited too, man. I'm excited. I'm excited as fuck. Where can they find all your stuff, man? Uh, you can look me up on Solmar Music, uh, S O L S O L M A R Music. Um, you can see on the screen as well my Instagram, my Twitter. Uh, my SoundCloud, my email even. That's my old email too, yes, but sir. you can hit me up on there. I still check that email. <laughs> yeah. well, dude, well, dude, it's been a pleasure, uh, man. I'm also on TikTok. You can look up so much. Shout out TikTok, man. Yeah.
Hell yeah. Dude, it's been a pleasure, bro. Oh, I can tell you really fucking know your craft. I can tell you put a lot of years in. It was, it was, you blew my mind on a lot of interesting stuff, and you kind of opened my eyes to how detailed your job really is. It's amazing, bro. Yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing your stuff, man. Yeah. But thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll definitely, like, I do plan on dropping something in August. So, like, it would be dope if I could come back down here. Again oh, fuck yeah. That. Whenever you got, whenever you guys have projects dropping, you can come here and promote it. That's All the right. whole point of the, that's the whole point of the platform, that's bro. That's facts. That's yeah, facts. Yeah. All right. Well, that's I sure. appreciate you coming by, man. Solmar, Grindhouse, baby. Breaking the Realist Real Boy Radio, man. We out here again with another one. Y'all have a great day. Catch y'all soon. <laughs>